you have to have thick, thick, thick skin. I'm talking to the point where, you know how like you have calluses on your feet and they don't even necessarily look that nice? Okay, that's how your whole mindset will have to be on your way to making your first million dollars. Because let me just give some examples of things that will happen to you on your way across the jungle to make your first million. Family member will betray you. Most likely, I see it six or seven out of ten times. Somebody. I'll give you a public example. Dane Cook. You may have heard of Dane Cook, the comedian. At one point, he was like on top of the world, you know. And then he had his brother managing his money or his half-brother or whatever. And it, and now that half-brother's in prison because he stole, I think, over $10 million straight out of his bank account. You know, the person you thought you could trust, your own flesh and blood? No out there you're on your way to making a million bucks and somebody's on the way to steal it and so i saw a little interview i don't know dane cook but i saw a little interview where he was talking about how it, it, you know made him i don't want to say the word depressed but something like that to the point where maybe you don't want to proceed and i'm telling you when that first betrayal comes you're gonna have to have super thick skin to the point where you're just like Oh, yeah, I was expecting that. I'm good. Someone took, I'm on my way to making my first million. Someone took, stole 200000 from me. Good. I'll, just, I'll make it up. That's the thick skin you need. And you ain't going to make it. I have a guy, a, a sales team, and I have a new guy that started with me. And yesterday, it's just yesterday, he called somebody. They said, yes, I want to buy what you're selling. So, But the guy said, I'm a little busy now. Can you call me back in like three hours? So my staff guy called him back in three hours, and the guy just blew him off. Didn't answer the phone. Then he called him back again, and the, the, the customer on the other end was like, well, I'm kind of busy right now. And my staff guy got really mad, and he's like, Ty, I'm thinking of sending him a nasty message. And I just said, I said, welcome to the jungle, baby. Welcome to the jungle. People say one thing and do something. I said, is this really going to th- – because he was all thrown off. You could tell. He was writing me – this much on WhatsApp, writing me this long message. I said, you want to make a million bucks? You want, you're on your way to your first million working for me? Uh, you literally are bent out of shape by this teeny little thing? This is teeny. No one even stole anything from you. You just had to do an extra phone call. But in this world we live in, people are getting weaker and weaker willed. It's true. As uh, one of the greatest thinkers... I think the wisest person I've ever read, Will Durant, who won a Pulitzer Prize, he's dead now. He said, nations are born stoic and die Epicurean. And this modern Western world we live in, even the world as a whole, because we've become wealthier as an entire global civilization, we're born stoic, meaning the original people who founded the United States or whatever country. These were people like with axes and chopping down trees and building log houses and surviving winters and almost starving to death. They were stoic. That's what was stoic. They could, they had thick skin and no matter what came, they just went right through it. Bullied their way right through the snow. Just, boom, I'm going. Okay, I'm hungry. We're just going to go to bed on empty stomach. Well, now what the word Epicurean means is lover of pleasure. So, Nations are born stoic and die Epicurean. I'm seeing a consistent pattern. I reach over 100 million people a year. I see a lot of people trying to make their first million or whatever it is their goal. And I see them getting thrown off by the the smallest inconsequential thing. And I go, welcome to the jungle. I don't think you're going to make it. I'm going to bet against you. The first thorn bush that you bumped into that scratched you just a little bit, maybe even draw blood. You're sitting here like, oh, I got to stop. Come on, guys. Give me, a, give me an hour. I need to patch myself up. Oh, okay. This is the jungle. That's nothing. That's child's play. One of my favorite stories is uh, Shaquille O'Neal and Akeem Olajuwon, two very famous basketball players. And when Shaquille O'Neal wa- came into the, the NBA, become a pro basketball player, he was used to being the biggest, strongest, toughest guy. He was over seven foot tall. If you see Shaquille O'Neal when he was in college and first year in ba- in pro basketball, he was an amazing, like just one of the strongest people ever to walk this earth. Trust me, in terms of athleticism, 
uh, Kobe Bryant said, the strongest person I've ever met is Shaq. Shaq in his prime. And so Shaq's used to just bullying people around on the basketball court all the way from junior high, high school, college. He played at LSU. Now he's in the pros. Even in the pros, there's an interview with Shaq. He said, I used to just throw one elbow at the beginning of the game just to set the tone and show people who was the boss, the king of the jungle. Well, he said the first time he played the Houston Rockets, I had this guy, Hakeem Olajuwon, who was an immigrant, came from, I think he came from Nigeria, came from Africa, wasn't quite as big as Shaq, but he was a big guy. He's like 6'10", right? Big guy. And Shaq goes, I think it was a playoff game or an important game. They're playing, they're playing, they're playing. And Shaq is being guarded by Hakeem Olajuwon, and he goes, I just want to show him who the boss was. So he said, I threw an elbow and hit uh, hit Akeem Olajuwon right in the square in the chest. He said, anybody I'd ever done that to pretty much was intimidated for the rest of the game. So he said, I threw that, I scored the goal, and as we were running down, Akeem Olajuwon just came up next to me and just went, because he has this deep voice, he he went, good one, little man, and just kept playing and totally psyched Shaq out. He said, I threw my strongest blow at this Akeem Olajuwon guy and it didn't even phase him. He thought it was funny. And that's the attitude you need to make your first million to get across the jungle. When someone throws a blow to your chest, figuratively, hopefully not, you know, <laughs> actually, but they throw a throw something at you, you're just like, ha ha. You do that to people, people get a little freaked out and you make it through the jungle. You find me somebody who the first little thorn, like maybe your first business idea is going to fail and you're going to lose six months of your time in $10,000 or maybe $50,000. The first person just goes, ha ha, good one. Now I know what not to do next time. That's the person I'm betting on, okay?